A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Yes, he can. I'm sure of it. He won't come. Popcorn. Hello everyone, this is a no damage playthrough of Resident Evil Code Veronica X. This is the HD version played on an Xbox Series X. Resident Evil. The American Midwestern town, Raccoon City, has been completely decimated due to the T-Virus outbreak that was instigated by the international corporation Umbrella. Claire Redfield, who arrived in Raccoon City to search for her lost brother Chris, and a rookie police officer, Leon S. Kennedy, managed to escape from the city. But their ordeal was only a prelude of things to come. Three months later. Your identification number is WKD4496. <sighs> Welcome to your new home. Her name is Claire Redfield. We caught her trespassing in our Paris lab facility 10 days ago. She apparently infiltrated the complex looking for her lost brother, Chris Redfield, one of the surviving members of RPD's famous STARS teams. Don't move.
I have the rocket launcher in my inventory, but we're not using it. forces team. But in any case, this prison's been taken over. Troops have been wiped out. What are you saying? You're free to leave the complex. But you may as well know you have no chance of getting off this island. And what about you? What are you going to do? Don't worry about me. Next up. Some handgun bullets, the knife. The knife isn't going to see much action in this playthrough. So I got grabbed by this guy, but if you're fast enough, you can shake him off. And you won't get bit. Zombie? Well, great. Wait right there. I'm coming over. Uh, sorry about that little misunderstanding, but I thought you were another one of those monsters. Shut up. Make one wrong move and I'll shoot. Relax, beautiful. I said I was sorry. My name's Steve. I was a prisoner on this island. And I'm guessing you're not from Umbrella either. No, I'm Claire. Claire Redfield. Claire? Hmm. Nice. I'll remember that. Hey, I heard there's an airport around here. Well, once I find it, I can finally escape from this crazy island. Well, I'll see ya. Hey, wait up! I don't want you following me, lady. You'll only slow me down. So before we move forward, there's a body over here with some handgun bullets. We want to pick those up now because the area is going to repopulate with zombies.
Then we're going to go into these, uh, this bunkhouse over here. Move forward a couple of steps over this way, and we're going to kill this zombie over here. Before we head into the next room, we're going to pick up these handgun bullets. Quick turn. If done correctly, you'll be able to do it all before the other zombie catches up. Super quick. More handgun bullets on this body over here. The game just absolutely slams you with ammo. You've got plenty of ammo in Code Veronica. After picking up these handgun bullets, this guy dashes through the window, and then what I like to do is I like to knock this zombie down, not kill him. And in doing so, he drops his M100Ps, we can pick him up, quick turn, leave. The zombie positions change based on which door you enter and exit. And by eliminating the one that was in between the two doors, we can ensure that no zombie is in between the doors when we exit. So that is an example of zombies you should take your time out to kill versus zombies you shouldn't take your time out to kill. These zombies do not respawn. I usually like to kill these first two zombies right here. Once we go around the corner, this other zombie will wake up. And I just like to knock him down because killing him is a waste of ammo. Because like I said, the zombies will despawn when Please we come back. Please deposit any metallic items you have in the security box. I'm gonna put away the rocket launcher and all of our metallic items. By the way, if the audio mixing is a little weird, I apologize in advance, but Code Veronica is an extremely loud game, and I mix all of this stuff live while I'm streaming. Chris Redfield. What are you doing here? Chris Redfield. Is he a relative of yours or something? You mean my brother? Ah. Your siblings. Well, it seems your brother is under surveillance by Umbrella. What? I've got to contact Leon and tell him to let my brother know he's being monitored. It's a good thing I have access to an outside connection from here. Well, that file shows the latitude and longitude of this place. <laughs> Why don't you send your brother the coordinates and ask him to come help? Thanks. I'll do that. Hey! I was just kidding. There's no way he could get here, even if he is your brother. Yes, he can. I'm sure of it. No way. He won't come. You'll just end up disappointed if you rely on others. Believe me, I know. What was that all about? Teenage angst. That's what that was all about. Anyway. Hawk Emblem. Throw the switch in order to activate the shutter in the area outside. I like to just go ahead and uh, use the Hawk Emblem here. Because there's just like a bunch of extra time spent just like putting the thing in the box and taking it out. Especially because when you walk by, then there's the thing. It's like, please deposit any metallic items you have, and it's just it's just more time. So just go ahead and drop it off. The time spent walking is uh, significantly less. Because you'd be forced to clear your inventory anyway. <laughs> I'm going to take the M100Ps here, and that's it. So we're going to 
gonna head to the right here and we're going to blow up that barrel. And then pick up the extinguisher. So the M100Ps are, uh, are pretty nice in that whenever you shoot a zombie and it goes down, there is an almost 100% chance that the zombie is not going to get back up. So if you shoot a zombie and it takes a fall, you know it's not going to get back up, generally. That is unless it's like falling at your ankles and tries to take a bite out of your ankles, so be careful about that. A couple of zombies over here, one's munching. That zombie is really close to the door, so take a wide left, but it's not worth it to shoot those guys. Whenever I shoot at zombies with the M100Ps, I can generally expect them to take like two shots from the M100Ps, and I just delay for a second just to like sort of check myself and make sure that, the, that it doesn't require a third shot. I did waste a little bit of ammo there because I didn't adhere to that rule. One particularly annoying thing about Code Veronica is that unless you see an enemy actually bleeding out on the ground, then the game considers its hitbox still active and you will auto-aim at a dead enemy. And also, if you leave a room before an enemy is considered quote-unquote dead, then it will respawn with full health. So always, like, wait a couple of seconds. Like, if you just killed an enemy, wait a second or two before you go into another room just to make sure that there's blood around the body. So in the briefcase with the TG-01, Please deposit any metallic... Once we get back in here, you can hear the zombies are rattling at the windows. We're going to put away the uh, fire extinguisher and the M100Ps. You see, now that they're rattling the windows, we are to take advantage of another trick to keep them from bashing in. Most players actually don't know this, but if you trigger the shutters, the metal detector shutters... Please deposit then the zombies will not bash through whenever you go to use the uh, TG-01 at the uh, 3D printer. And then once the shutters are down, we're going to put away the flame rounds and BOW gas rounds we just equipped. We're coming back for those later. Get a quick turn and reopen the shutters. Then we're going to take all of our goodies M100P, handgun, knife, lighter, empty extinguisher. And then we're going to run back through the... Oh, I didn't do that. Okay, so you're supposed to run back through the metal detector in order to shut the shutters again. So that that way zombies will not bust in whenever you come back into the room later. But it'll mean that I had to shoot some zombies later, which is, which is fine. Which is fine. It's not dangerous at that point. It's just a waste of ammo. When zombies are positioned like that, it's always better to shoot them. But uh, I decided to be a little bit of a daredevil. If you see like two, if you see two naked zombies by the door in that camera angle, whenever you enter the room like that, gun them down. Just use the M100Ps and gun them down. It won't take much ammo. Yeah. 
more handgun bullets in the Jeep over there. You can see that the bridge was destroyed on a bombing run. Everything's on fire. It's a war zone here. That guy wasn't completely dead, so I had to spin around. I like to only shoot these two zombies right here, because once you go through the training facility and, uh... You do the whole Bandersnatch scenario, then these two zombies will disappear and we'll be replaced with Bandersnatches. Now once we're in here, we're going to raise the handgun and we're going to aim over here, so that when this dog comes around the corner, because he always takes that wide arc. Always, always, always. So once he does that, you can pop him, make him fall over, and then knife him to death. So it'll only take three handgun bullets to kill all these dogs here. Pop. Slash him. If it knocks back a little bit, don't be afraid to move a little further forward. Basically, these dogs only pop in, like, once you pass, like, uh... These other two dogs, they only come in, like, once you pass certain lines in the room. They're just all based around, like, event flags. I mean, you can shoot them from further away, but they don't aggro until you get a little closer. I think it's because they're sleeping. Code is NTC0394. For some reason, the music stopped here. I think this is a bug that only happens in the uh, 360 version of the game. I think I've only ever seen it in the 360 version of the game, where the music just suddenly stops. Anyhow, we're going to take it nice and easy. If we don't see a zombie, we'll just shoot in the background. If you hear any noise in the background of my mic, it's just poos knocking stuff around. Pay no attention. After that, we're going to pick up the steering wheel here and then make our way back to the entrance. I don't actually know what this building is called. Mansion? Residence? It was Alfred's house residence, I don't remember. See? 
Steve? Yeah, this is an example of what I was talking about. Remember uh, when I said, wait a couple of seconds before you enter another room? That zombie is the reason why, because he respawned, even though I killed him. C, E, decide. Huh. Huh. That was too close. But I found something, thanks to you. Looks cool, huh? Oh, I need those. Give them to me. You gotta be kidding. I found it, and I'm keeping it. Fine. Let's make a deal. I'll trade you for something fully automatic. See you around, Claire. Adios. Hey, wait! Steve! Oh, okay. Official residence and private residence. So this is official residence, is what it's called. Redfield! How dare you interfere with my operation? What are you talking about? You let yourself be captured so you could lead your people to this base! I have no idea what you're babbling about! You don't fool me! I am Alfred Ashford, commander of this base! Oh? You must be one of Umbrella's lower level officers if you're in command of a backwater base like this one! How dare you! The Ashford family is among the world's first and finest. My grandfather is one of the original founders of Umbrella Inc. Now tell me, why have you attacked this installation? Attacked? Shortly after you arrived, my base was attacked. You must have informed your people of its location. I still don't follow you. I really don't know anything about that. Unacceptable! How can you deny it? My base has been destroyed. And thanks to you, the experimental T-Virus was released, creating countless zombies and monsters. Tell me, who do you work for? Who sent you... <laughs> Have it your way, then. You're just a rat in a cage anyway. I'll be sure to keep you entertained before I dispose of you. <laughs> we'll equip the lighter here because there's bats. So in this room, because the bats aren't aggroed, you can actually like walk around them if you want and just not equip the lighter. But, you know, it's a little quicker to just equip the lighter so that we can just ignore the bats. Go under these stairs here. There's some handgun bullets. Also, a map if this is your first playthrough.
Next we're going to pick up this side pack. It's free. So these zombies in here are going to respawn later in the game. So the only zombie that I actually want to take out is this one. Because there's a chance that he could go turbo. And if a zombie goes turbo, then there is only a very, very, very slim chance that you will be able to escape it. So if it's like a very tight quarters, dodging a zombie is very, very ill-advised in this game. Unless you're speedrunning, in which case that's what you're supposed to do, is just try to be as risky as possible about getting around obstacles. Another thing about zombies going turbo is when they go turbo, then whenever they grab you, it is a guaranteed bite. So there's certain zombies that you can get grabbed by and just shove them and you're okay and you're not going to get bit. But if a zombie went turbo and it grabs you, then whenever it grabs you, it is going to bite you 100% of the time and you can't shake out of it before it bites. So now we're going to quick turn and uh, I usually like to stand right here. Just uh, wax these guys with the M100Ps. That zombie right there, uh, generally I only knife him if he uh, crawls into like that little choke point there and prevents me from escaping. He looks suspiciously close to that, so I just decided to go ahead and knife him. So now we got the biohazard card and the bowgun bolts. And we can make our way over to the training the training facility now. By the way, the clinking you hear occasionally, that's uh, the bugs hitting the lamp posts. I actually didn't realize that until recently. For these zombies over here, it's a uh, wide area, so you can just dodge right around them on the way to the training facility. We're just 
just going to move straight forward and uh, hug the shutter wall over here. Then we're going to go into this room first and pick up the bow gun. Contamination detected. Level 3. Emergency shutters will close. All personnel evacuate immediately. <sighs> that was close. We need to get the bow gun now because... The bow gun with the explosive arrows is the most efficient way to kill Bandersnatches. I like to use the bow gun on the zombies in this area. The bow gun is uh, not great against zombies. It's uh, the regular bow gun bolts. If you fire from far enough away, are good against bander snatches. Like if you have enough uh, range, where you don't have to worry about them hitting you. But I'll get into that later. Otherwise, yeah, the bow gun takes like way too many bolts. Be very, very careful about uh, the range at which a zombie falls down. Once you're shooting it, you have to you have to uh, let go of the aim button and run around it immediately while it is falling. Just uh, get used to learning how to do that, because if you don't, then chances are you're going to get bit in the leg. So I played uh, I played fast and loose with these zombies, but you may want to lure them back to the entrance of the room in order to deal with them. So for this guy, it's, uh, there's a bit of a choke point there. Dodging around him is uh, not so easy. I prefer to use the M100Ps on him. And we'll pick up the uh, key with the tag. The second zombie over here, if he just moves forward after he moves down the stairs, if he moves down the stairs at all, you know, just run behind him and exit. We're not coming back here. And for this room over here, we're going to use the bow gun. No need to use the knife. Perfectly fine. There is a possibility that zombies can get up a third time with the bow gun. But generally, they'll go down after, uh, on the second fall. Once we get rid of the key with the tag, we can combine it with the bow gun and use some of our bow gun bolts. You combine it with the bow gun bolts to get explosive arrows. 
The explosive arrows are probably the strongest weapon in the game. But you only get 50 of them. And you only get 30 of them throughout disc 1. Which is the first half of the game where you play Claire. Up until the first boss fight with the Tyrant. So you generally want to save them exclusively for Bandersnatches. cutscene ends, just run directly for the stairs. into the save room on the right here, and I like to drop off the knife, the fire extinguisher, the duraluminum case, and the biohazard card, and then pick up the hemostatic medicine. Ground I have prepared just for you. Please try and keep me amused, and do not disappoint me by dying too soon. I so want to enjoy this. <laughs> So before we fight the first Bandersnatch, make absolutely sure that you have the explosive arrows equipped. The Bandersnatch will take three explosive arrows. There's also a rule to the Bandersnatch, to fighting the Bandersnatch. It's a, uh, it's a kill trigger rule. Basically, the Bandersnatch cannot die while it's in the middle of hit stun. So if the Bandersnatch is in the middle of hit stun, you have to wait until it starts walking again before you shoot off the final shot. Otherwise, it'll still stay alive and you have to finish it off with a handgun bullet, even though it's at zero HP. So, pow, pow, and wait for him to start walking again. And then he'll die in three bowgun bolts. So it seems like it might take more bowgun bolts than it does, but it's three explosive bolts. All the other Bandersnatches will take two. That felt good. Don't worry, Claire. Your knight in shining armor is here. You wish. But thanks for the help. See? This is why you need me. I got your back. Whatever. Here. Take these. Machine guns? For me? You know the deal. In exchange for your Lugers. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> this thing is too cool. Yes! Now this is my kind of weapon. All right! Huh? <laughs> hey, this thing's empty. You cheated me. Up there, plenty of ammo, just for you. Way up there? Give me a boost and I'll get it for you. All right, all right. Back! You're heavier than you look. Hurry up! Happy now? 
What? Now that your knight has made his appearance, he can join you in your descent into death. Man, that mic was over peaking. He. <laughs> Okay, let's do it! Wait here, Claire. Time to test out my new toy. <laughs> so once we gain control of Steve, make sure that you manually rotate Steve to the left in order to shoot all these other zombies, but actually you don't have to. Like, you can just leave the room. And then you can walk down here and just uh, shoot all, all the other barrels. You only really need to kill the zombies in this room. Because the zombies in that uh, other room with that shutter will despawn whenever you come back as Claire later. Hey Claire! I managed to clear a path for you. It should be safe now. Well, what do you think of my work? You see? This thing is a lot more reliable than any person. Than people? Steve. What were you doing here? Who brought you here and where is your family? Shut up! I don't want to talk about it! Steve... Never mind. Let's get going. Claire, are you okay? Steve, behind you! No! What's wrong, Steve? Shoot him! Wait! I... I can't! No! Steve! No! Steve. Father. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I used to work for Umbrella. I tried to steal information, intending to sell it off to the highest bidder. He was caught. Mom was killed. And we were sent here. Oh, Steve. He was a fool to do something so reckless. 
so stupid. It's okay now. Just rest. There's some handgun bullets not so cleverly hidden on top of that barrel right there. Then we're going to equip the regular bowgun bolts so that we don't accidentally use any explosive bolts where we ought not use explosive bolts. Also got to be careful because sometimes they can be on the ground. Taking the eagle plate and then we're going to make our way back to the official residence. need to pick up any more arrows after this. So over here a couple of Bandersnatches will pop in. Basically whenever we see them uh, vault over like this we're going to turn around and we're going to use 13, maybe 14 arrows each. I was staggering my shots a little bit to uh, hit confirm, make sure that they would actually hit. Main hall repopulates with four zombies. But they're all in places where it's very easy to hit them. You can go up the stairs or you can wait for that zombie to come to you, but usually I like to go up the stairs just to make absolutely sure that that zombie is aggroed to me because. It's funny to watch the zombies go stair surfing. Take the handgun bullets and use the gold lugers here. But also, we want to equip the uh, explosive arrows for the bow gun.
1971. So same with this guy. Pop him once, wait for him to start walking again. He actually can't attack until he goes through a full walk cycle after he comes out of stun. So you can actually confirm that he is lumbering towards you. So coming up here... This trick requires some attention. Once you hit the camera transition trigger, then the Bandersnatch will spawn. He does not spawn yet. So what I do here is I go this way so that the Bandersnatch is as far away from me as possible when we hit the trigger, like this. Shoot slow, stagger. And same with the second Bandersnatch over here. What I like to do is I like to walk backwards until the camera transition happens. Then I like to run to this corner. And you have to be constantly mashing the uh, L1 button. Or left bumper or left trigger if you're on GameCube or whatever. It's the it's the it's the lock-on button. The change aim button. You have to be constantly mashing it when shooting the second Bandersnatch. But you can use regular bowgun bolts because you'll be far enough away to do it. This is the reason why I went ahead to visit the official residence second, was because the bats in here will already be aggroed whenever you come in here. So we need the lighter for this in order to avoid damage. Keep focused, brother. Our enemy is only a little girl. Oh, why is this taking so long? My apologies, Alexia, but I have been doing my best. The revival of the Ashford family depends on your success, brother. I am aware of that, Alexia. I will revive the family name myself and make you the master of the glorious Ashford family. Do not worry, brother. I will handle them both myself. Who is there? Is someone at the corridor? What is it, Alexia? N nothing. I believe I must have been imagining things. Let us go, brother. Man, how does Alfred even make that voice? Closing the music box, we can now take the silver key.
there's more bowgun powder in this parlor over here. Before we continue on, we absolutely need to pick up the bowgun powder to make more explosive bolts because there's two more bandersnatches. So you have to buffer that first shot. So like hold R1 as the door is coming, as the door animation comes up, and then fire one arrow. Just like mash the button until you fire the arrow. Wait for him to stagger and then fire again and then switch your aim immediately as the other as the other bandersnatch is jumping over the desk and repeat it. Just fire, stagger the shot, wait for him to recover and then shoot him again. This room is pretty tough. Unfortunately, avoiding damage without any sort of uh, forward knowledge in that room is not possible. So once we're back in here, we're going to shoot one of these zombies to get out of, to be able to pass by them, kind of get out of the way, or you can shoot multiple. There's enough M100 P ammo to do it, but we're kind of trying to conserve them. The M100 P bullets for uh, a couple of dogs later that are in a very weird position. By the way, um, if you run into fire, it just stuns you. It doesn't actually cause any damage. What are you doing here? Hemostatic medicine. How kind of you. Thanks. Here, let me help you with that. Thanks, but I can take care of myself. Just go. Keep it. It was a gift from my brother, but... Thanks. Here, let me give you this in return. You might need it later on. Now go. Don't worry about me. By the way, giving Rodrigo the hemostatic medicine is required for the S rank. I never went over the requirements for S rank, by the way. Don't use any first aid sprays under four and a half hours. Do not save except for the free save given to you between disc one and disc two. And save Rodrigo. 
with the hemostatic medicine. So back in this area, we're going to use the M100Ps to down these guys. You only really need to save like 10% of the M100Ps for the dogs. Music fades here. We're good to go. Gonna equip the M100 the M100Ps here. Then once we come in through this door, recommended you wait for that zombie to go next to the barrel. The one I just shot. Wait for him to go next to the barrel. Don't bother shooting any of the other zombies in here because the uh, there will be another uh, zombie respawn once we come through here. There's four zombies in this room. We're going to use the M100Ps on the first zombie because it's tight quarters. Or you can just be like me and use the M100Ps all the way through. It's all good. Now that we got the lock picks, we can open the this dura aluminum case here and get the custom handgun the M93R parts and get the custom handgun So Dr. Zombie over here is always going to be in turbo and there's nothing you can do about it, except this. So what you got to do is you got to equip the explosive bolts and then what you got to do is you got to turn left and go over here. This always ensures that Dr. Zombie will be moving in a straight line towards you whenever you try to auto aim at him because when turbo zombies go turbo they like to zigzag around a lot and it's difficult to land shots especially with guns that you know are going to kill them in one shot. So the uh, explosive bolt does kill Dr. Zombie here in one shot. Not the grenade launcher, not any other gun, the explosive bolts. Also, you don't need the lighter down here in order to avoid getting bitten by the bats. Just walk. If you don't hear any bats flying around, then you can just walk through it. Because it's only if you run or if you fire your gun that the bats become active. So normally the M93R can uh, do three shot bursts if you hold the button down while you're firing, but if you stagger the shots then you can actually uh, fire it really fast. So just like let go of the firing button and then just like refire before the third shot has come out.
next we're going to pick up the rusted sword and solve this puzzle. We're going to use the sword. And then we're going to quick turn. This guy doesn't go turbo, so if he grabs you, then you can shake him off. Shake him off with no difficulty. So the thing about shaking off zombies is you have to jiggle the D-pad. The other face buttons don't actually uh, contribute towards shaking a zombie off. It's just the uh, it's just the directional buttons. Back in here, just keep walking. You could actually run after you turn the corner here, and you'll be perfectly fine. By the way, you can see D.I.J., the developer's inside joke rat, in the uh, glass case there. I'll try to point out all the uh, D.I.J. cameos that I know of. Basically, D.I.J. is just a silly little Easter egg. Yeah, there we go, locking on to, locking on to dead zombies. Super good. hidden box of handgun bullets here. Climb up the crate, drop the crate, go into the item crate here, and we will pick up Dura Aluminum Case and the Biohazard card. And after this, we don't need the regular bowgun arrows for a while. Like that last bot, that last batch of thirty regular bowgun arrows. We'll just use that to mix together with more bowgun bolts later, or sorry, uh, bowgun powder later. Make sure that the M93R is equipped here, and if you forgot to close the shutters, then this is where you'll have to gun down a couple more zombies. Please deposit any metallic items you have. Actually, just one zombie. Box. But there, now I can get the BOW gas rounds and the flame rounds from earlier. If you've played this game before, you probably don't know how BOW gas rounds work. So the BOW gas, what it does is it cuts the uh, it cuts the HP of the tyrant in half every time you shoot it. As far as I'm aware, the BOW gas, the P-Epsilon gas, is really just weaponized P-Epsilon gas from Resident Evil 2. And every time you fire it, it cuts... It cuts the Tyrant's HP down by half. So the main thing is to save them for the plain Tyrant. That's another reason why I'm not saving my bowgun arrows for the plain tyrant. So with this particular zombie pattern, I just waited for the one on the right to move forward and then I could run behind him. We're not coming back here ever again. And from 
here, I'm going to go back to the training facility. Because I have the second eagle plate. But I wanted to go get the lockpick first, because I wanted to get the acid rounds from the glass case. So here, you want to equip the M100Ps. And then what I like to do is I like to run over here. And as the camera angle changes, we're going to aim down at these dogs. And then we're going to do a little thing called, uh, called the slide shot. Basically what a slide shot does... Actually, no, not even slide shotting. So because these dogs are at like weird angles, that's why we want the M100Ps, so that we can shoot two enemies at once. Each gun is aiming at an individual dog. It is one of the few places where that is actually useful. We'll do slide shotting, I just forgot that this was not the spot where I actually do utilize slide shotting. But slide shotting is also a trick that you can do in uh, Resident Evil 2 and 3. The original RE2 and original RE3. Once we use this here, we get the emblem card. We'll head back down the stairs. I went back in into the other area with the shutter there just so I could use the biohazard card really quick. so that I could discard it automatically later. Now that we got the emblem card, we can go back over here. We can open this shutter and pick up the grenade launcher. Totally necessary for this first boss. One thing to be very cognizant about is your ammo count while you are using the custom handgun because obviously you don't want to get caught reloading when a zombie is like right up in your grill. Those acid rounds, I got them mainly for shooting spiders with later. So someone in Twitch chat a second ago asked, is slide shotting the term for shooting at angles between up, centered, and down? And yes, that is correct. So if you uh, if you hit the fire button once you press up, but your character is not aiming up completely, then you can shoot at angles between up, centered, and down. Otherwise, you can only shoot up, centered, and down. So basically, you're just sliding the D-pad and hitting the X button at once. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a plink if you're familiar with fighting game terminology. You're basically plinking the buttons, and by plinking the buttons, you can shoot enemies from further away at stranger angles. Basically, you're able to decapitate zombies from further away with Chris's shotgun, for instance.
Now we gotta examine the painting. Get the code 1126. Because Claire will not open the door until this cutscene has been shown. Now we're gonna head back to the lobby and use the biohazard card for the last time to go back to the room where we got the bow gun. Before we do anything else, there's some acid rounds over here that we want to pick up. And we'll equip the acid rounds and the grenade launcher here. And then pick up the portrait. Once we do that, the albinoids will pop out of the Detected. things here. Emergency shutters will close. Pop out of the capsules. So then we're going to back up, and then these two albinoids will come down from the ceiling. And then we'll spin around and shoot them, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to hang back in this corner next to this body. The albinoids cannot get around the body. And once we see all four of them group up, that's when we make a break for the door. Otherwise it's po impossible to get around them. You will get electrocuted. These two zombies respawn here. That upon using the skeleton picture, we get the gold key which will allow us to get the red ant object. That's really the sole purpose of this key. By the way, in this room, if you pay very close attention, you'll see D.I.J. next to the flower pot, right here. Greetings! 
You must be the lovely Claire Redfield. Who are you? Let's just say that I'm a ghost, coming back to haunt your dear brother. Whisker? It seems there's not much explaining to do, is there? I was the one who attacked this island. Who'd have thought you'd be hanging about? <laughs> All the better for me. Now that the cat dragged in this nice surprise, your ever so caring brother will definitely show up. I must thank you for being such good bait. I don't know what went on between you two, but you have them all wrong. My brother is not the kind of person you think he is. I despise Chris. Uh, what are you gonna do to him? you may be of some further use to me. I'm going to let you live a little longer. Yeah, you had to watch during the cutscene in order to see D.I.J. I think I'll make a video showing like the D.I.J. locations sometime. Maybe a YouTube short. That would make a pretty good YouTube short, I think. Also, for some reason, Wesker has, like, a very, very, very subtle, like, motion blur applied to his, uh, character modeling cutscenes. It's, like, one of those things that's just, like, so subtle. Just to sort of make him feel more menacing. And like sort of communicate the fact that he's like... Superhuman. So we'll choose the picture of Veronica, then choose the picture of the man with the twins, and then we'll... Choose the red-headed dude on the far right, and then the red-headed dude with the plate. And then we'll choose Edward. Then we'll choose Alexander. And Alfred. Then we're going to use the piano roll. Pick up the blue ant object over here. And then make our way back to the private residence. I was just making absolutely sure that 
I would have enough inventory space, and you do. It's not until this camera angle that you can actually shoot the zombies, because they don't spawn in until the camera angle change. Also, one other thing is, while a zombie is getting up, if you're trying to shoot another zombie that is behind a zombie while it is falling or getting up, then for some reason the zombie that is getting up has invincibility frames and will absorb all of your handgun shots. Basically, it's just coded to like never have any uh, damage-taking animation at that point. Next, we're going to equip the explosive arrows and then go up here. This first Brandersnatch is going to come up on the far end. Pow, stagger, pow, switch aim, pow, stagger. Finish him off. As you can see, yeah, like I tried to shoot that zombie like three times, but the other zombie was still in the middle of its death animation. The hit detection in this game is weird, man. That guy was like really close to the stairs, so I quick turned and went back down the stairs immediately. This is what you get when you get too close. I will send you surfing down the stairs. Be very, very careful if you send a zombie surfing down the stairs, though. Sometimes they may still be alive, and you might get your ankle bit. There's going to be four zombies in this hallway over here now. It's interesting that a bunch of zombies managed to wander their way in here. Once we take out these two zombies over here, we're going to go back into Alexia's room. to examine this earthenware vase over here and get the red ant object. And then take this music box plate. Now we're going to go into Alfred's room. Once we've used the King Ant object, we can now use the music box plate. down, pick up the dragonfly object, pull off its wings, use it on the keyhole.
Claire Redfield, hold it right there. We meet each other at last. A pity I must say goodbye so soon. I am Alexia Ashford. For the pride of the Ashford family, I will kill you. Wait! What's going on? After her! Are you okay? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. This must be... Second, what just happened? So there never was an Alexia after all. You mean he thinks he's two people? Okay, that's it. Let's get out of here. Before we proceed any further, we need to put away the M100Ps and get the BOW gas and the flame rounds. Also definitely want to put away the explosive bow gun, like because we're not using it. 
There's no more Bandersnatches. Gotta save the rest for Chris. So, I made a little bit of a mistake. I was supposed to pick this up before I went to the airport. Teehee. Hope you didn't mind that I fast-forwarded. Self-destruct system what? has been What? Alfred's insane. Activated. He's trying to blow All this entire personnel. place up. Evacuate immediately. Clear! Those must be the remaining survivors. We'd better get out of here, too. Right. Let's go! The self-destruct system has been activated. All personnel evacuate immediately. We gotta get to that airport! The self-destruct system has been activated. All personnel evacuate. So once we come back through here, all the zombies will have respawned. Just go ahead and wax them all. Thank <laughs> you. 
Unless we raise the bridge! Leave that to me. You stay here and make preparations for takeoff. The self-destruct system has been activated. All Gotta take the control lever before we exit. The self-destruct system has been... Then we're going to raise this bridge. Alright, so pick up the handgun bullets and the grenade launcher rounds here. Now putting away the bow gun. We're gonna keep the handgun on us. We'll put away the flame rounds.
Right, so for Tyrant 1, gotta have grenade rounds. Basically this fight is a DPS check because he moves very slowly towards you. So take like three steps forward, and just aim up while firing at him. When he kneels, you can get a little bit closer, but make sure that you just stop firing just as soon as he uh, as soon as he starts to get up. And get ready to turn and run. But yeah, you can get kind of close, but not too close. If you get kind of close, then it takes fewer grenade rounds, but you're not going to use all of your grenade rounds fighting him anyway, no matter which way you swing it. It can take anywhere between like, yeah, like, like 12 to 15, I think. Like, even if all the grenades in your cluster don't hit him, it'll still do a lot of damage. I don't actually know the exact uh, damage statistics because I haven't uh, examined this game with an SRT. to get worried. No time to explain. Let's go. Right. We're out of here. Time Your to say goodbye to this death system. trap. We made it. Yahoo. Ugh, it's finally over. Claire, I'm sorry. I know I caused a lot of trouble for you. No, it's okay. It was hard for both of us. Well, I really hope you find your brother. I... I know what it's like to be alone. Oh, Steve. <clears throat> so, where should we go now? I can take you anywhere you want to go, Claire. <laughs> I hear Hawaii is nice this time of year. You got it! <laughs> <laughs> This game is not over yet. Now you will see 
what real terror is all about. <laughs> door. Right, so here's where we want to equip the BOW gas rounds. This fight, by the way, super, super easy. Just pay attention. Yeah, so this fight, actually super, super easy as long as you have the BOW gas rounds, because the BOW gas rounds will half the Tyrant's HP every time you fire. <laughs> I can see his little ping -ling. Anyway, one BOW, two BOW, three BOW, switch over to acid rounds, two acid rounds, one, two, and hit the switch. You're done. DIJ is in this room. What was wrong? Oh, nothing. Just a giant cockroach that had to be stepped on. What's happening? I don't know. The plane just changed direction on its own. It's flying in autopilot mode. I can't switch over to manual control. My apologies, but I cannot let you escape now. <laughs> Alfred, you cross-dressing freak! Are we? Huh? Latitude 82.17 degrees. That's the Antarctic. We're over the Antarctic. What? Hey, those are the seaplanes that left the island right before us. Then that must mean this place belongs to Umbrella. So this is the free save that you get in the middle of the game. This is the free save that you get in the middle of the game. 
uh, in the original Dreamcast version, this was your between discs save. So basically, like, if the game crashed or something while you were trying to change discs, at least you could save your progress. But the uh, developers decided to make that, you know, a free save for S rank. So that's why it says 0, zero on your number of saves right there. Continuing on, and yeah, no, that was a that was a jump cut. The end of the previous video ended on save data. The start of this one starts from load data. Because I loaded up the second half of the run, which was on a separate video. So there you go. That's why I quote unquote suddenly load after saving, is because I want them all to be one video. So there you go. Oh. Hey, wake up, Steve. Oh. Oh. We're still alive. Thanks. Oh, uh, <coughs> plane's trashed. Well, let's split up and find another way off this oversized freezer. Right. Okay, let's do it. So starting from here, um, you could make a detour into this room at the top of the stairs and kill a bunch of zombies and get some more ammo, but I actually decided to wait until coming back as Chris. I don't even remember if I did that this playthrough. I don't think I did. Completely optional. Anyway, once we round the corner here, we're going to encounter one of my most hated enemies in this game, moths. This is why I kept the handgun. So what I did was I slide shot at it by holding R1 and uh, just plinking up and X in order to fire a different uh, a different height. So just slightly up, but not all the way up. So like you're able to shoot slightly higher, but not the highest, you know? And by plinking those buttons, you know, you can make, uh, you can, you can shoot zombies from very, uh, interesting ranges. So there's three zombies in this room. I'll go ahead and kill them all with the, uh, with the enhanced handgun. Probably best to wait for this guy to come around the corner because there's going to be more range for you to be able to shoot him. Then we'll take the mining room key. Before we proceed, before we exit, we're going to go over here and pick up the AK-47. The AK-47 is going to be the gun that I use with Claire from here on out. Let's 
so what I do here is uh, I run behind this capsule over here and aim down with the acid rounds and I kill that spider and then I'm going to exit and re-enter. Because that other spider is going to be way too close. Basically no gun that you have is going to actually stun spiders. So it's better to just try to kill them as quickly as you can than get them back into their original positions. If you blow off the abdomen of a spider, then its next attack, once it gets in range, is going to be a jump attack towards you. At which point, you can just blow them up in midair. By the way, this spider under here, you can't actually do anything about it, but you do fight that spider as a boss later. You can't actually shoot that spider from down there, but that spider is actually meant to become a boss later. There are a lot of really neat, really subtle details in this game, as far as like the plot goes. Which I do like about Code Veronica. So we have to examine that, uh, that uh, valve socket there, otherwise we can't proceed with the game. You are absolutely forced to examine it, because you have to know the uh, shape of the emergency gas shutoff valve. We're going to pick up these uh, handgun bullets here because we're going to store them in the box so that Chris can use them later. Let me just shoot that dog. We're not going to go behind this switch over here in order to get those two green herbs because there's another dog back there. We don't need those green herbs. I mean, you can if you want to. I'm not your real dad. We gotta flick this switch over here, too. In order to return power to the facility. Next, we're going to turn off, turn this switch over here. And then we're going to put the barcode on this box over here and flick the switch to send this BOW gas into this room over here. So the actions of you, the player, incidentally created a boss for Chris to fight later. So we got the gas mask here because the P-Epsilon gas is all over the room. BOW gas does not affect humans, fortunately. Once we come back into this room, we're going to use the AK-47 and we're going to... Just a neutral aim, kill the first one, then hit L1 to shoot the second one, and then for the third one, we're just going to keep tapping L1 until we see Claire fire at something. At which point, you know, you just kind of guess, you know, do you aim neutral or do you slide shot? Because a slide shot will be an upper shot at a further range. It depends on if the moth is higher or lower. Hi, DIJ. Next, we're going to go to the item crate, and we're going to put away the handgun bullets, the custom handgun, and the only things we're going to take with us are the AK, the gas mask, and the pot. All you got to do is aim neutral, 
in order to kill that over there. Although you probably want to just go ahead and kill all the moths in here. If you shake off fast enough, then a moth will not lay an egg on your shoulder. So you'll be okay. like there's an Australian observation base about seven miles away from here. That should be our target. Then if we can break through the wall with that digging vehicle, we might have a chance. Okay, let's do it! It's all my fault. Don't say that. Listen to me. We'll escape from here. Together. Come on. We've got to shut off the gas. If we split up, we'll have a better chance of stopping it. <sighs> okay. Steve! Don't forget. We'll get out of here. Together. Right. So now we're going to use the valve handle. This is why we needed to examine that thing earlier so that we knew that we needed... To, so that we could know that we needed to cut the valve handle so that it is an octagon now. Right, so after we got done with that, shoot down. You can actually shoot the zombies from the balcony up here, because this is all the same room. So you can just shoot those zombies from up here. And then you don't have to uh, encounter them later. We're going to slide shot in order to kill that moth. Okay. 
because we're on one end of the hallway, we're actually good to just either do try to do neutral shots or try to do slide shots in order to kill those moths down the hall. But just keep mashing L1, and if you see Claire move, that's when it's safe to fire. We're going to be killing Nosferatu with a sniper rifle. The sniper rifle is, unfortunately, the only consistent way to kill Nosferatu kind of quickly. Claire! What are you doing? Let's go! Actually, the only consistent way to kill Nosferatu without taking any damage. Are you ready? I'm going to bust through that wall! Go for it! we can get out of this insane place. Okay, let's go! Come on, let's go! What, are you scared? So here's rule zero of fighting Nosferatu. He's only vulnerable, his weak spot is only vulnerable when he is in the middle of a recovery animation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pivot to the right a little bit, then he's gonna stab, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna backstep towards him, and then we're gonna run forward as soon as his subjective left leg goes past his subjective right leg, like that. And every time he's gonna go for that stupid grab attack. So we're gonna quick turn, put up to us, and run, spin around, click left just a little bit. And in doing so, we're able to hit his weak spot. I've 
got you now. Are you all right? Claire! You're alive! I'm sorry. I failed you. Don't worry about it. Let's go. <clears throat> I swear I'll protect you next time, Claire. We did it! We're finally out! <laughs> Look! There's a snowmobile over there! Perfect! We'll be able to ride right over to the Australian base with this! Yeah! Let's go! Don't forget about this, Claire. Following up on a lead given to me by Leon has brought me here.
Don't worry, Claire. I'm coming to save you. I didn't expect to find another living person left on this island. Who are you? I came here looking for a certain girl. A girl? Have you seen anyone named Claire Redfield? Did you just say... Claire? You know who she is, don't you? Don't worry about her. I helped her escape. Several planes took off from this island not long ago. While I can't say for certain, she was probably on one of them. I see. I guess my sister owes you. Thanks for helping. Everyone's gone. I may be the only other person left. Go on. Follow your sister and get off this island. So first things first, we're going to get the custom handgun and all the bullets, and we're going to take the grenade launcher, the grenade rounds, and get the bow gun with the explosive bolts and put away these arrows that we actually didn't need to get. Then we're going to equip the explosive bow gun arrows, and we're going to enter the door, and then... Wait for the music to fade all the way in, and then we're going to walk three steps forward, pow, 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 and he's done. Now we're going to use the lighter to get the submachine guns. Really, you only need the submachine guns for uh, one enemy. For just like one part. So I'm going to put them away for now. Take the... Uh, flame rounds, and also put away the explosive bolts, because we don't actually need the f explosive bolts right now. We only need to shoot this zombie over here for now. 
Don't even need to worry about those zombie close to the uh, turned over barrel on the left side of the jeep. Then we're going to flick this switch and move the tank. Hidden box of handgun bullets right here. Next, there's a box of shotgun shells over here as you round the corner. We want to pick those up first before we do anything else. Because we're about to spawn some black widows in the room. And we won't be able to pick up the shotgun shells safely otherwise. Once we pick up the battery pack, we're going to turn around and run straight forward. The uh, tracking of these guys is not so great, so you can just like run straight forward and you know they can't really tell whether they're supposed to turn right or left. Volkswagen-sized spiders would be apex predators, but you know. All right, so we're uh, also going to solve this puzzle right here to unlock Steve in the battle game. Red, green, blue, brown. Put that shit away, we don't need it. We also don't need those acid rounds over there either. Now once we come back into this hallway over here, just uh, run straight to the elevator. As long as you don't stop to try and shoot these guys, no harm will come to you. There's one more zombie that we have to gun down, and that's the one by this lift over here. Then we can use the battery and go up the lift. Also got to pick up the uh, chemical storage key right there. We'll be using it very soon. There was a friendly but naive king who wed a very nasty queen. Who is that? The king was loved, but the queen was feared. Till Alexia? No, she's already fully awake. Chris, oh little fishy, come see my hook. Chris, I'm sending some company to keep you entertained. Consider this a small welcoming gift from me. Enjoy. <laughs> We're going to quick turn and we are going to head to the elevator in order to go to floor B1. These handgun bullets and the flame rounds over here. Those flame rounds, by the way, are only present in Code Veronica X. The original Dreamcast release, those flame rounds are not there.
next, we're going to go into this door to the left. Do not pick up the doorknob yet. Do not. Absolutely do not pick up the doorknob yet. Because if you do, then you'll have to deal with more hunters. Because we're about to encounter our first hunter. There's some shotgun shells and some handgun bullets over here. Then we're going to use the chemical storage key and set the uh, chemical store to 128 degrees in order to get the Clement. Next, we have to equip the Grenade Launcher. The Grenade Launcher will kill hunters in one shot. As long as it is point blank, it will kill hunters in one shot. So this first hunter that jumps down is the one that we're going to shoot. We'll auto-aim towards him, and then we'll pivot while Chris is reloading the grenade launcher to aim directly at the second hunter and kill it. If you try to wait to auto-aim, like wait for Chris to reload the grenade launcher and then auto-aim, then the second hunter will kill you. Sorry, he will hit you. Not kill you, hit you. Those attacks do... Those attacks are really annoying, though, because once the wind-up happens, you cannot dodge it. Not unless you were already running at full speed and you were already running to your right. Otherwise, it's not possible to dodge any hunter attack. So the only way to successfully uh, react to hunters is to point-blank them with the grenade launcher. And once again, getting the doorknob early, getting the doorknob first creates more issues because you will fight an additional hunter that you don't want to fight. So these zombies over here, we'll just go ahead and wax them. I exited that room too early. No particular reason. Just too early. So now there's going to be these, uh, these cameras over here. And uh, if you get caught in the cone, in the white cone, then a hunter will come in. That camera only roams, like, the wooden walkway there. Just be careful. Wait for the camera to make a little zeep noise, and then we can leave. And once we go back in here, we're just going to go directly to the elevator and head to the first floor. Not floor B1, but the first floor. Another camera will be in that hallway. Just uh, 
Just play stop and go with it. It's all good. Then once we put in the tank object... We'll get the turntable key. So now we go back to where we picked up the doorknob. Once we exit this room, the uh, camera will not be present. We're just going to take the elevator to B1. And we're also going to pick up that shotgun. The reason why we didn't pick up that shotgun is because we would have raised the... Um, we would have raised the uh, the staircase. By the way, don't ever use the shotgun against hunters. It's really not that good against hunters. It'll knock it'll knock hunters back, but you're better off just using a grenade launcher and killing them in one shot. You want to use the shotgun here, however. By the way, skip the cutscene before it's over, because otherwise Chris will start in a different position and the Bandersnatch will gain a frame advantage on you and hit you. So skip this cutscene before you shoot the Bandersnatch. Long time no see, Chris. Wesker? He's still alive? <laughs> what are you doing here? I came for Alexia. Who? An organization hired me to capture her. Wait! You attacked the island! And my sister! I hate you. You destroyed my plans. So now I've sold my soul to a new organization. Now die. Here's a little secret, Chris. I figured out that your sister is now in the Antarctic. With Alexia. It's too bad you won't be seeing her again. <laughs> Alexia? <laughs> So I skipped the cutscene here, and that gives you a frame advantage upon skipping the cutscene, and you can just uh, keep stun locking him. Remember the uh, rule, you know, he can only walk once, he has to walk one step before he can attack you again. So you can just use that to just keep stun locking the Bandersnatch over and over again. Once we uh, send the lift up, we're going to push this box to the left because you can see there's some bow gun powder up there. We like that stuff. Equip the grenade launcher here. There's going to be two hunters as soon as we exit the door. 
So Chris will automatically aim towards the first one. We have to wait until the hunter is right next to us to point blank, and then we're going to manually aim towards the second one while Chris is reloading the grenade launcher. Remember, once again, you cannot auto-aim until Chris has reloaded the grenade launcher between shots. However, you can manually turn Chris to aim at the hunter before you shoot. Next, we're going to go to the chest, and we're going to drop off the custom handgun and take the submachine gun instead. I decided to go ahead and combine these just to get them out of my inventory. keep the grenade launcher equipped here. There's going to be another hunter that we have to point blank. Sometimes he might go slow. Sometimes he might go fast. He went a little slow for me there. There's a uh, box of shotgun shells under one of those zombies right there. They're about to become zombies, by the way. So what you gotta do for this puzzle is you press... is you press three, three times, or you can press three, two times, and then press five once. And then you empty it. The end goal is to get it filled with seven liters of oil. So as long as one of the three or the five has one in it, you're good. We actually don't need those shotgun shells, we can just leave. You'll have more than enough shotgun shells. These guys are just a waste of time. Next, we have to pull the switch and send it down. Then we're going to take the lift down. Make sure you have the submachine guns equipped here. These hunters are what the submachine guns are good for because they're far enough away, you know? They're just they're these guys are just DPS checks. However, they can jump over your shots, so that's what the submachine gun is good for, is just a consistent DPS stream. So here's what I was talking about earlier when I said that slide shots will allow you to decapitate zombies from further away with the shotgun. I'm just blinking up and hitting X. And I'm just decapitating them from super far away. And it's pretty great. Re-equipping the, uh... Re-equipping the, uh, submachine gun here. It is possible to just, like, stealth behind this hunter. Because, like, hunters actually, uh don't have ears, they can't hear you. But uh, it is possible that stealthing behind the hunter will fail, so... Yeah. 
Now we're going to pick up all the proofs from this lift. And now our mission is to make our way back to the room where we dropped off the tank ornament. Next, I'm going to drop off the submachine guns. We don't need them, although you could use them for uh, the albinoid boss. I also like to equip the shotgun. There's going to be a uh, different type of hunters once we get out of the elevator here that spawn in, that take the place of the hunters that we killed earlier. They're called sweepers, and uh, they have a 100% chance to poison if they swipe you, and there are no blue herbs between here and the boss and the exit of, and the exit of this whole area, so... The way to get around these guys is to pivot to the right a little bit, and then we're going to run, we're going to sort of just run in front of him, and yeah. That way is mechanically consistent. I think I've only failed that maybe like once or twice, but that's actually one of the few instances where you actually can run around these hunters and it will be like a consistent strategy. There's another thing of acid rounds in the locker over there if you want it. I didn't bother to get it. got to turn on the fan in order to clear out the gas here and uh, you know it's just more zombies they're just there for you to decapitate you can decapitate multiples of them by just aiming at hip height yeah the shotgun in code Veronica is absolutely monstrous it doesn't do great damage, but it is absolutely amazing at killing zombies. There's going to be another hunter in this room. We're just going to move straight forward and just hit the door immediately. Just don't stop for anything. As long as you don't stop, you won't get hit. Then we'll get the Clement Alpha. We're just going to run straight forward again. And then we're going to go up the stairs here and uh, we're going to go into the elevator now and we're going to the first floor.
Two more shotgun shells over here. I'm building a cat tree while I'm commentating. Tee hee. We're just going to run straight around these spiders. Uh, there's some grenade rounds there, but we don't need to pick them up. Got to equip the flame rounds for the albinoid here. So you can either use the submachine gun on the albinoid, but... Uh, I started using this strat that Matt DeRock taught me. Where we run over here to that crack in the ground right there. And then we're just going to slide shot down and try to hit the albinoid from afar with flame rounds. But it didn't work. He broke out of that. And so I have to wait for him to come back towards me. So if he's like coming back towards me like this, then I can actually like slide shot down and hit him. But otherwise, if he's like that far away, then I have to wait for him to come back. But yeah, the albinoid, you just, you just shoot him from over here. You don't have to get down with get down there with him. So it takes about uh, it takes about seven uh, flame rounds in order to kill the albinoid. We'll take the eagle plate, and now we're done with Rockford Island. On our way back through, once again, we're just going to uh, squeeze around these guys. Hit the ladder immediately. Then we're going to take the elevator up to the second floor. Which will allow us to take the lift back down to the first floor. Because we picked up the shotgun earlier, we uh, cannot take the uh, shortcut back to the uh, eagle plate door. So I accidentally went down to B1. I meant to go to the second floor. Because going to B1 without picking up the shotgun from before is the uh, speedrun route.
Yeah, in case you were wondering how Chris knows to fly a jet, he was in the Air Force before Resident Evil 1. So for these, uh, these tentacles here, we're going to fire one flame round and wait for it to burn out, and then fire another flame round. And then these guys will retract. Once we come down here, do not go to the left because you will spawn some moth zombies. And we'll use the halberd over here. Get whatever goodies are in here. The paperweight. We need that for a puzzle. Next, going to get the uh, bow gun. Actually, we're not. I lied. We don't need anything yet. Also, some people were asking if I actually uh, write any scripts before my commentary, and um, I've tried to a couple of times, but it just ended up taking a really, really long time. So no, I just do these. I, I just do these all off the cuff. It's like all the knowledge is all the knowledge is in my head, and that's why I um and I pause a lot. But that's okay. I mean, you know, it comes off comes off the cuff a little easier, and you know, it feels more natural to me to do it this way. And I think people like that. After we get the octo valve from where Claire used it earlier, we have a bunch of parasite zombies. So these guys, whenever you move, they will spit out parasites. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide shot all of them. We'll auto aim to this one, decapitate him, and then we'll auto aim towards these guys and slide shot their heads off and just yeah, no, they're all they're all they're all free. Just slide shot. Plink up an X. There's no need to go into that door to the right anymore. I mean, you can get some more magnum bullets, but believe me, you don't actually need that many magnum bullets if you know what you're doing. Equip the uh, grenade launcher with the regular grenades just in case. What? He's here? If you're quick enough, you can quick turn before the camera actually sees you, and that gives you enough time to uh, exit and not get seen. So when you re-enter, there's like a, there's like an extra second delay before they can track you. But doing it this way, yeah, you don't have to deal with any hunters. It's pretty great.
Re equip the shotgun and just move to the door directly in front of us. There's sweepers in this room, but we're not going to fight them yet. We use the octo valve handle. Get the shotgun shells. Turn on the power. There's a total of seven zombies in the winding hallway out here. And we're going to slide shot all of them. Sometimes if you're lucky, you'll get all the zombies, all three of those zombies, triple decapitation. Pull each of these jewels individually and grab the contents inside. We already got the uh, the adapter valve handle, which turns it back into a square handle, and then we got an extra magnum rounds. There's 18 magnum rounds total in the game, but you don't even need 12. <laughs> I like to use the uh, shotgun for the ants down in this area here. This is another thing that slide shotting comes in handy for. It allows you to kill a lot of ants really quickly. And so basically if Chris does not auto aim, after killing, like I'm turning away and trying to auto aim, and if Chris does not auto aim towards anything, it means there's nothing to shoot. But basically, you want to, uh, you know, exterminate these ants from pretty far away. So if Chris auto aims, slide shot down and just uh, get rid of them. We want to get rid of as many ants as we can before we trigger this uh, cutscene over here, because the enemies can still move during cutscenes. Got the wing object. Did a quick spot check, trying to auto aim, see if I need to fight any to kill any more ants. The ants will respawn whenever you re-enter the room, so we're only going into this, into the one necessary room that is actually required to go into down here. AA, crown, heart, spade. Now we're just going to keep slide shotting ants until we can get back to the elevator. The ants do like one damage every time they bite you. So killing them is requisite because they are impossible to dodge otherwise.
So next we're going to get the fire extinguisher, which by the way, I hope you brought with you. I hope you brought it with you from all the way back in the prison. It's the oldest meme in Resident Evil Code Veronica. I hope you brought the fire extinguisher. We also got to get the, um, we also got to get the, uh, explosive bolts, bow gun. There's no cameras in the hallway. We're gonna hit this switch in order to bring up the extinguishant and refill the fire extinguisher. And then we're going to take the elevator down, use the fire extinguisher in order to get the magnum. But not before we point blank a sweeper after we use the square valve handle right here. But yeah, no, I've, as long as you got a weapon that kills sweepers in one shot, either the grenade, regular grenade launcher or the magnum, they're free. Just buffer it, fire it, kill. Done. Walk over here, we use the fire extinguisher, and take the magnum. We need the magnum for the uh, next fight coming up with the Black Widow. Make sure that's equipped. Who could have done this? <laughs> Alexia. That is how I dispose of insignificant bugs, said the spider to the fly. How do you wish to die? <laughs> Wow, he just humped that control room to death. So here's what we do. We're going to aim up and we are going to mash the fuck out of the L1 button while we're doing so. 
And after two shots, maybe two, three shots, that'll be enough to get the uh, Black Widow onto the ground. And then we're going to wait for the Black Widow to try to climb after us. And while it's climbing, we're just going to shoot it a bunch. We can just stand right under it and keep shooting it. And it's done. Free boss. And for this guy, we're just going to stand here and let him come to us. In the Dreamcast version, there are going to be two sweepers here. So we want to wait for them both. But if, as long as you stand under those columns over there, they cannot jump at you. As in, they are hard-coded to not be able to jump. So you can just fire your gun, and you're good. Now once we get in here, we're going to climb the stairs and we're going to get the knife over there. And then we're going to use it to get Claire out of the cocoon under the stairs. Make sure your magnum is reloaded and make sure the magnum is equipped before you use the knife. You have to go into the menu and select use. Not equip, Clear. use. Chris! I missed you so much. I know, but we have to get out of here. Not yet. We have to find Steve. Who's Steve? He's a boy who escaped from that island with me. But then a monster attacked us and we got separated. So that means Steve is still somewhere in this base? I'm sure of it. <laughs> it's Alexia! Alexia? There really is an Alexia? <laughs> It is almost time, you genetically inferior siblings. <laughs> what did she call me? After her. She might know where Steve is. Let's go. Just go. I'll be fine. But Chris... You've got to save Steve. Go! So all we need to do is just equip the... Uh assault rifle that Claire had from earlier. Don't pull anything out of the box. We're gonna run straight across. That tentacle's gonna come out, then we're gonna back up until this next tentacle spawns. And then run forward. And then just keep firing until we actually hear the tentacle retract. A couple more shots just to make sure that there wasn't like a squirming, like a squelching sound on the other side.
And if you don't hear that, it's safe to go. Then we're going to shoot that zombie a bunch. And we're going to grab the folder. Turn the handle. Then we're going to grab the crystal. We're going to quick turn and we're going to use the crystal on the center of this. It is very easy to mess this up because you have to be very precise in order to put the uh, crystal down in the center. And then once you grab the security card, the uh, trap will unarm. Now we're going to go to Steve. Steve? Oh, Claire. No, I can't do it. Who did this to you? That crazy woman told me she was going to perform the same experiment on me that she did on her own father. She's completely insane. Uh, 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 What's wrong? Claire, can't breathe. Claire, help me. So for this uh, section over here, we got to wait until Steve commits to that first cleave, and then we're going to run behind to the chair, and then we're going to straighten ourselves out as much as possible. There's a very small chance that Steve can hit you, but if, it, if he does, there's really nothing you can do about it. Just try to run as straight as possible. <laughs> I cannot. What? 
What are you saying? I'm glad that I met you. I... I love you. Claire. Just met you. I love you. Steve? 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 At last, I found you, Alexia. Come with me. <laughs> You're responsible for the creation of the T. Veronica virus. And now the only existing sample is in your body. I want it. Now! You want it? You are not worthy of its power! At the start of this fight, your Magnum should be equipped. Fire off two shots, and then move to the right, and then after she's done attacking, you need to fire three more shots. But uh, my auto-aim glitched out here, so as soon as I realized that I wasn't hit confirming, I dropped my aim and I ran immediately before I got hit by the fire. It takes five Magnum shots to kill Alexia. Now we have all three of the items that are necessary to go to the Inner Sanctum, the area where Alfred and Alexia were genetically engineered. We're going to slide shot these zombies. If Chris auto aims, do a slide shot. Take the shotgun shells here, and there's the biohazard key in there. Then 
then we're going to go down the stairs and into the sterile room area. Where we can now go over here because the power is out. And we can get both the blue jewel and the red jewel. Gotta be careful about this zombie to the right here. Uh, you can't really auto aim towards him. For some reason, Chris won't, won't auto aim, so you have to manually aim towards him. But uh, same rule applies. If Chris auto aims, just slide shot them. I got done building the cat tree. Poost really likes it. Once we have used the red jewel, we can get the music box plate, then use the blue jewel. Equipping the explosive arrows because we don't need to use anything else for the rest of the game, except for the shotgun. Now we take the dragonfly object and we're going to go get the last winged object, which is in the laboratory where the Ashfords were manufactured. this cat tree behind my desk from now on. This one is too good. No, you're, you're good. You're good, Poos. Just stay right there, okay? There. from the inside? No, I can't. Chris, there should be a self-destruct system somewhere. If you activate it, all the electronic locks might be deactivated. Ugh. 
All right, so now we're going to go up these stairs over here. Slide shot these guys. And then we're gonna re equip the bow gun with explosive bolts. Because that's what's gonna make fast work of Alexia. I bet you guys don't know what the code is. The password is pineapple, you idiot. This facility will detonate in five minutes. All those are now unlocked. No, 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 wait. It was password. You made it! Of course. Come on, let's get out of here. simultaneously on three. Got it. One. Two. Three. Alright, so we're gonna run to the corner over here, and if you hear a noise coming from Alexia, there's a specific noise that you can identify that will let you know when a parasite spawns. But this is why, you know, playing the HD version is gonna be easier. It's because you can just, you know, that's when you know when the uh, little parasites are gonna spawn. Because you can actually see them a lot easier because widescreen. But you want to shoot those with the shotgun, and then you finish Alexia off with the uh, explosive bolts. It takes 12 explosive bolts. So now we're going to turn around, get the linear launcher, and... Just fire and dodge, there's not really much you can do. 
what a fucking shot. I can't believe I made that. Anyway, this has been Code Veronica S rank no damage. <laughs> Chris! Uh, Move. Uh, Claire! No! It turns out that Alexia's work wasn't much of anything. So now, the only thing left is revenge. Let her go, Wesker! You don't want her! Fine. Claire! Today's a good day. I came for Alexia, but killing you is even better. Sorry to disappoint you, but Alexia... Gone. That's no longer a concern to me. I have Steve to work with. What? Steve. In his body, there's still a living T. Alexia virus. Steve should be a good specimen. Maybe he'll come back alive, just as I did, and be able to see your sister again. You freak! Don't you touch him! I'm sorry, dear heart. But my men have already taken him. You get out of here, Claire. But what about? As a surviving member of Stars, I have to finish this. Remember your promise. I'll end this once and for all. Say hello to my comrades who you've killed. I don't know where you get your confidence, Chris. system has been activated. All personnel evacuate immediately. The self-destruct system has been activated. All personnel evacuate immediately. Try. 
Wesker. keep my promises. <laughs> Chris, promise me. Please promise that you won't leave me alone again. I'm sorry, Claire, but it's not over yet. There's still something we've got to do. You mean... Yeah! It's payback time. We've got to destroy Umbrella. Now. Let's finish this once and for all! Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I also have a lot of other Resident Evil No Damage videos on my YouTube. It is my eventual goal to no damage runs of at least all of the ones that were developed first party by Capcom. But yeah, go check out my playlists. for the ones that I already have. Also check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I do all of these runs live over there. And the successful attempts get commentated and uh, uploaded to YouTube. The link will be in the description below. If you would wish to monetarily support my bad challenge run habit, you can do so on my Patreon. Patrons get early and ad-free access to all of my videos as they are done for as little as $1 a month. You can check it out over at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. And lastly, other social medias. Join my Discord server at discord.gg slash carcinogensda. Also, twitter.com slash carcinogensda, tiktok.com slash carcinogensda. Yada, yada, yada. You're going to find me under carcinogensda. Anyways, I'll see you guys next video. Thank you for watching.
your rank only maxes out at A in the American or English versions of the game, but it's S rank in the Japanese versions. The one save in the middle of the game does not count towards your saves, but do no saves, no retries, no first aid sprays, under 4 hours and 30 minutes, and save Rodrigo, and you get an S rank, and unlock the rocket launcher. That's all. One more time, thanks for watching. See you again soon.